ask for anything. Reverend Jack, contrary to what people believe that, you know, he always asked for money and all this stuff. He did. You know why he asked for money? Because that was one of the people that he was asking for, for to pay his staff. Because he didn't really have a salary and he didn't have an infrastructure to really pay it. And so people just thought that all he was doing was asking for himself. It was really was not, that was not in my judgment. Just sure. one, one quick follow Yeah. One of the things, my guess is, yeah, made it very clear that after the 84 election, mm -hmm. because Jesse Jackson had one of those delegates, he said that he would not have become a congressman if in 84, Jackson had to create all those delegates. He created even more after 88. Okay. And that's why I'm, I keep trying to figure out what happened to all that power. He had much more power after 88. But, yeah, I think the the power, but I think the power kind of just it was out. Yeah, yeah, it went out. People started running for office. I mean, I, I don't think so. the whole story will ever be told about what came out of that campaign, those two campaigns. Yeah. I mean, people were running. We, we have black, I guess I said we have black hair in almost every every major right. city. Yeah, right. and, and that all came out of that. Yeah, but he had people in places. In the South, in mm -hmm. all of those states that he won, in this situation, in all of those places that he won, he had this groundwork that I always wanted to say, well, why don't we go tap into that? And that would live on forever. Well, I tell you, so, I tell you what he always said. I'm a tree maker and a tree shaker and not the jungle. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna shake the tree and make yeah. the shit come around. Excuse me. similar at our last one. I absolutely agree with you. And but I, I also agree with Yolanda. I think we have to see this now as a shared responsibility because there is so much happening in this country that it takes more than just a few leaders at the top. I mean one of the things that I am hopeful about is this this new group of African American women that have come to Congress they are going to double down with the women that we already have in Congress and be serious with purpose. I mean, they are fighters. They are young. They are not, I mean, they're not taking any crap off of anybody. They're going to have to learn a little something. You know, we all get knocked down because we think we're too smart. But the fact is, I think we have a, we have more, I mean, you have the most power. And I say this all the time because after, after the 2008 campaign, I went to, I went to film school. Because I was so tired of not being able to see myself and to see the real, to see a woman, to see what we were really capable of. You all have more power than we will ever have to tell the story and to put the pressure. Because back in the day when Reverend was running, listen, the only reason he was able to propel was because of this room. The only mainstream, the mainstream press didn't really start writing about him until he won Michigan. And then they were like, oh God. So yeah, my, 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 my real point is we have we have all these women in here who have to fight with us. They have to help us tell those stories. We have all the members of Congress. We have we have a conference that's coming up in February to address these issues in New Orleans too. It's called PowerRising.org, and I, and it's specifically for African American women who are trying to make sure that we stay on the agenda because even with that, with the whole Barbara Lee situation, that 
pres every president, everybody's mind. So they had to go give her another position when she had really worked hard to get the position that, that she didn't get. Right. So we we still have to fight because we're used to, we, we are actually, and many women in here current test, we get comfortable supporting people. We just do. And we never push ourselves out. But I think our community needs to see us. What's the website again? Uh, powerrising.org. And we hope to see all of you there. <laughs> it was an amazing event that, that, that Mignon and Leah pulled. It was just a brainchild. And we just decided that women need, black women need to get together, just to be together after all of this craziness and everybody was feeling crazy. What do you, you think will be? be what, what do you think the time will come when you don't have, when we won't find women in the situation? We are Barbara Lee. Where people, when is that going to happen? What's going to be yeah. that moment when, you know? I don't have the answer to that question. I don't think any of you has that question. But I, 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 I see in this in this election so many brilliant young black women coming. We got we ushered in a whole new generation. Most of the, most of these people we got elected this last term are under forty. Yeah. And we haven't seen that in a long time. So, you know, I think we're going to see change with them. I, I, you know, in, in, even in terms of the Democratic Party, which did not help any of them, I don't think. I mean, I think they gave Stacey some money, but they never really endorsed or helped anybody. And they did this on their own. These women got out there and decided, I, I need to do something. They've never done anything. You got a school teacher. What's a lady from Connecticut that was a school teacher? Yeah. Johanna Hayes, yeah. who we saw on the news with Obama when he presented her with the Best Teacher Award. She was so excited. She decided to help her family. Yes. And Lucy McBath, who lost her son, her son was murdered. And she decided she was going to turn her pain into power. You know, we're out there. We're out there on the front lines every day. Women have always been activists, but now we're learning how to be political. Yeah. What about the Democratic Party? What's she's on the DNC? I think we could go on. Yes. This is just getting to this. But the time. So let's give a big round of applause. A big round of autographs. All right, we're going to take a little break here and then uh, come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank the director of the Obsidian Collection. Okay. And what is the Obsidian Collection? Um, we're digitizing the Black Legacy Press and photojournalists. So we're capturing and digitizing history to share with millennials and Gen Z generations. Awesome. I know the 